The Angry Birds movie has a lot of political symbolism both hidden and blatantly put out there within it. Much like Zootopia, but this time it's the opposite political agenda. Before we get into this, there are two things I want to say. Number one is nothing in this video is or is not my own opinions or political views. This video is me pointing out the symbolism and what it may mean. In other words, if something in this video offends you and you wish to go down into the comment section and spread hate speech, just remember that as I said here, this video is not about my opinion, it is entirely about the facts and the speculation. Don't shoot the messenger. The second is that you should realize that the first bits of evidence will always sound odd and even silly. There's always a counter-argument. But as the list goes on and pieces start coming together, realize that everything needs to be taken into account in the grand scheme of things. One tiny political reference is meaningless, but in the grand scheme of the entire meaning of the entire movie, if it fits right in with what the rest of them are saying, you can bet your tail feathers that there's some hidden meaning. Also, major, major spoiler warning. This video goes in depth on most of the movie's plot, a movie that I surprisingly do recommend seeing, so only go into this video if you are prepared for every spoiler. Now then, while I'll get into how we know this later, I'd like to start by just flat out saying that Red here represents people on the right side of the political spectrum, and the village he lives in represents Western Europe. Red lives alone, off in the distance from the main village, representing how often major cities tend to be left-leaning and people out in rural areas tend to be to the right. Even in Texas, the state most often mocked for being so conservative, has a left-wing majority in its major cities. This is when I'll bring up Red's anger. Of course, living in a world that is increasingly going into the opposite direction of your own views is frustrating, and we'll get more into that soon. But as we see in the very beginning of the movie, Red is angry that he had to deliver a gluten-free cake, stating, To get the gluten-free cake? What the heck is gluten? I mean, does gluten even exist? As we know, the gluten-free fad is typically associated with, quote-unquote, hipsters, along with things like veganism and kale. And hipsters also tend to be left-leaning. So of course, this angers Red. During the opening credits, we see Red getting angry at this blue bird with a light stripe for playing soccer in his yard. So he slaps it. This is actually a reference to the 2014 World Cup, Germany versus Argentina. The German team wears red, and the Argentinian team wears blue and white stripes. These colors also fit their flags. And Red being Germany here will be brought up throughout the entire movie. Red, or Germany, takes out this blue bird, or Argentina, in a single strike, referencing the World Cup where Germany won the game with a score of 1-0. We also see that he is not fond of this mime, who is always too close to him. Mimes, as we know, are often a symbol of France, who is a neighbor of Germany. Why else would there be a mime here? There's no mime in the game. This could also be a reference to World War II, in which Germany took over France very quickly. This scene could also be a reference to Germany, as Red here is playing big and tough against these other powerhouses. We also see him slap down a doctor, which as we see in his certificate, has the last name Wingstein. So judging by this, this doctor is of Jewish descent as last names ending with Stein are often German or Jewish. Red knocking him down may be a reference to the Holocaust, as even Red is surprised after doing it and is trying to be a bit secretive, perhaps a reference to Germany's rules about mentioning Nazis or the Holocaust in media at all. He feels bad about it and knows it was a mistake. And still, in the opening credits, we see Red as a child creating a magnificent statue of an eagle, which as we know, and later gets referenced a ton in this movie, represents America. But in this case, Red is making this specifically to symbolize his love of freedom and liberty. But his fellow classmates mock him for this. As many people see, many people on the left make fun of and mock people on the right. Which is not to say people on the right don't either. Rather, it's saying that it is more socially acceptable for people on the left to do so, because, according to them and the mass media, they are on the right side of history, in their eyes. It is also worth noting that while Red is making this great and detailed statue, his fellow classmates are making finger paintings of rainbows. Take that as you will. And we're not out of the opening credits yet. 
here we see some girls supposedly flirting with Red, but as the joke goes, they were actually looking at someone behind, or rather above, Red, the much more attractive bird. At first, this seems to be the usual joke, but as they walk away, we can see that the bird that was flirting is now holding hands, and the other two female birds are now holding hands as well. They are lesbians. And now may be the best time to point this out. Notice Red's hair, or plumage. It's typical bird hair. It's somewhat neat, a reference to how typically conservatives, especially those in the Christian faith, often keep their hair short and neat. A majority of the other birds, and especially the ones who are already doing other things to symbolize their left-leaning side, have much wilder plumage. This lesbian bird having dyed hers bright pink. After the credits, we see Red in a courtroom, because while angry, he accidentally landed on another bird's eggs. And as it turns out, this family that wanted the gluten-free cake are also practitioners of natural child hatching, and speak in a much holier-than-thou tone all about it. Right now, these gluten-free, natural childbirth hippies are the only antagonists so far. But while the camera heads into the courtroom, we see this bird with a neck brace walking out, but then takes it off and smiles, high-fiving his buddy. They obviously just got away with suing somebody over a fake injury, showing that there are many birds who take advantage of the system. In the courtroom, the judge, obviously representing the government, goes on about how great and happy their community is, and all under the protection of the mighty eagle. Again, symbolizing freedom and liberty. He even says this. So we see here that the politically left society is still very fond of these things, freedom and liberty, or as we'll find out later in the movie, only when it suits them. And another tangent brought up in this scene, the judge as it turns out is not this tall, but rather is standing on top of another bird. Size in movies is often used to symbolize power, so what this scene may be saying in the scope of things is that judges, or even just the government as a whole, is only so big and powerful because they are standing on top of others, or taking advantage of them. Naturally, they're only human, or birds too, but they are more powerful because we put them there. Red being angered by this may be a hint at how those on the right wing often want smaller governments, not big and powerful ones. Later, while stopped at a crosswalk, we see a bird crossing with all of her children. Red doesn't mention anything, but then a second bird crosses, and with much, much more children. And maybe my eyes deceive me here, but this first bird is lighter colored and has normal plumage, and the second bird is darker and has what appears to be dreadlocks? Or at least some sort of similar hairstyle, typically associated with people of African descent. This time, Red asks, Ever heard of hatch control? Take that as you will. However, shortly after, Red has a rare happy moment with one of these children. Also, just before the crosswalk scene, Red is annoyed by this cool bird with long hair and a fedora playing a saxophone. And we even see an Apple store. Literally apples, but the owner of the store is obviously a reference to Steve Jobs with his turtleneck and demeanor. And this customer bird is holding the apple up to his ear. As you may know, Apple products, jazz, and fedoras are typically associated with you guessed it, hipsters, and or typically left-leaning people. As is brightly colored hair and hair extensions. And soon after, Red walks past a salon where the birds are getting just those. And then Red has these feathers shoved right into his face. Red then walks by a pregnant yoga session and looks at the birds attending it. The last bird here has facial hair, that being a trans man or trans woman, or perhaps just a man taking the role of a woman. And Red's response to this is a look of shock and confusion as he says, Wow. And finally, at the end of this walking scene, Red sees a sign in front of the anger management classroom the judge sentenced him to, and it pisses him off more than anything else. It reads, smile, be happy, perhaps referencing how our society, especially in the eyes of the right, is leaning so far into happiness that we are having a hard time talking about anything that makes us unhappy. Be happy, smile, don't talk about controversial topics, says society, hiding in its safe spaces and closing their ears when someone who doesn't agree with them starts talking. So here we are, around 10 minutes into the movie, and if you aren't already convinced, then I'm not sure what else I can do. I'll ask that you keep watching as maybe 
maybe something later on will finally convince you. We haven't even gotten to the real deep stuff yet. When walking into the classroom, he sees some art on the side. The first being a statue of a single guy, the second of a couple hugging. He references this as, well that's art. And then the next piece shows a group of birds hugging. That's garbage. And then we see a mass of birds cuddling, all loving each other. Perhaps a reference to the free love movement. Again, a very leftist movement that states we should all be free to love and make love to whomever, whenever, even outside of marriage. So of course, those on the right see this as weird and exotic. In class, we meet some more characters, such as Chuck, the bird with super speed, who, as we see in his flashback, often uses it to mess with police. And he and others often see it as fine, a possible reference to the <laughs> the police meme, and general disrespect for police that's been happening lately, according to the right. If anything, I should be in honesty class, he says. There is also Matilda, the loving teacher, Terence, the hardened criminal, and Bomb, who, if angered or surprised enough, will literally explode. Later we learn that there is a happiness exhibit at the Museum of Happiness, again a possible reference to people wanting to change our history to make us seem like better humans. Perhaps this may again be a reference to Germany, as they have previously tried to push their horrendous acts in World War II under the table. Back at Red's house we see again that he admires the Great Eagle and all that it stands for. Again, being right-winged, freedom and liberty are some of the most important things to him. As we see in a flashback, this is seen as strange, and his classmates make fun of him for it. Back at the anger management class, Chuck brings up the sign that Red had earlier destroyed in anger. And of course, he labels it as so. It's about a hate crime. Remember, in Red's eyes, and thus in the eyes of many of those on the right, this sign and the symbolism behind it resembled the opposite of everything that they stand for. So of course he broke it. But in the eyes of others, it gets labeled as a hate crime. While trying to pass the blame off to another, he gets punched and says, Yeah, I guess I deserved that possibly a reference to how many of those on the right are ashamed of the more extreme among them who commit real hate crimes. He even wanted to mourn the loss of this sign, but was forbidden from doing it because he was blamed for it. Perhaps again referencing that when real hate crimes occur, for example those committed by the KKK, all people on the right side of the political spectrum often get the blame too, just for being on the same half of politics. But as soon as something more interesting happens outside, everyone stops caring about this hate crime and goes outside to see what all the commotion is. Perhaps a reference to how media will often cover hate crimes to death, but as soon as they move on to something else, everybody forgets about it and stops caring. Inside this boat, as we know, is the pigs. And the first thing they do is ram their ship into Red's house. We'll get back to this later. Leonard the pig introduces himself, stating that they have arrived to prove that they aren't mean interesting line choice. And to fully understand the symbolism I am about to bring up, I'll just flat out say it right now. The pigs coming to Bird Island represents the migrant crisis currently going on in the Western world, mostly Europe. Which of course means the pigs here represent Muslims, those who follow Islam. Firstly, if you are unaware, green is the primary color of Islam, as it is stated that it is the primary color that the Prophet Muhammad wore, as it is his favorite color. Also, there are various commandments in Islam that say you always have to have a beard. While not all of the pigs have beards, their leader does. But why? No pigs in the game did. One had a mustache, but even that is far from a full beard. So there has to be some significant reason to add this to his character design. In character design classes, it is always taught that if something is unnecessary, don't include it. Take that how you will. The pigs come bearing gifts and a friendly attitude, and also specify that there are only two of them. But notice how Leonard even takes some of the gift back. The judge, who turns out is also the mayor of the village, welcomes them with open arms, calling them their friends. Red is obviously suspicious of this since they destroyed his house. This may be a reference to how many governments in Europe are taking in immigrants and refugees and happily calling them all friendlies. From the perspective of many on the right, however, they stay suspicious of them because of acts they have done in the past, in the name of what defines them. While giving a thank you speech, Leonard says that their king sends his highest regard, to which Red then questions, king? You have in Red's and thus the right's eyes, having a king is a primitive form of government. The Western world has advanced beyond that and now has elected officials and a, while still somewhat corrupt, 
mostly fair court system. Being that the pigs have a king, and that's a primitive form of government, you could stretch that into this not being a symbolism of Muslim immigrants being monarchistic, but perhaps just in favor of a more primitive form of government. Sharia law. The combination of mosque and state. Their religious views and law of the land and ways they do business are all one and the same. And from the right's perspective, this is very restrictive and reprehensible. They would never want it, and so are suspicious of the immigrants who may want to bring Sharia law with them. In Leonard's speech, he wishes to share some of the great things from his world. That being, first and foremost... Explosives. Hey look, they destroyed more of the stuff we worked hard to build. Mm. Then a trampoline and two more pigs giving a performance. Remember how Leonard specified that there were only two of them? Of course, while everyone else is busy being entertained, Red is the only one who seems to notice and care that suddenly the number of pigs has doubled. I'm sure you have already put those pieces together. From the right's perspective, the left is just idly standing by, too busy being entertained by mundane things to notice the sudden influx. When the pigs start slingshotting fruit at the birds as a show, all of the birds are loving it. Red, however, says, Guys, it's the same fruit that's sitting in front of you. And then the pigs decide to ask the audience for a volunteer to be slingshotted. Of course, Leonard chooses Red, who then asked them to choose one of the hundreds of people with their hands up instead. The pigs then shoot Red out of the show instead of back into it. Red then decided to check out the pig's ship while they were away. His friends, Chuck and Bomb, join. While there, they find out that there are actually hundreds of pigs on board. Unaccounted for. This is another thing that those on the right tend to bring up. Many of the immigrants wound up being unaccounted for. Millions, in fact. The governments would state that only a few tens of thousands of migrants have arrived, but soon later it was revealed that they were not being 100% honest, and the real number was in the millions. Many on the left thought nothing of it, they are still welcome, while those on the right bring it up as an important matter. This next scene may be one of the more important ones. Red comes back to tell the rest of the party all about the pigs that are here now, stating that Leonard was obviously lying about there only being two and that the pigs are also bringing strange devices with them, in this case a plunger. As a result of this, rather than questioning the pigs, everyone boos red. This may be representative of what the politically right sees as its biggest problem with the migrant crisis right now. They can't talk about it without being booed. Various law enforcement in Europe have found that a few of the refugees are smuggling in weapons, large amounts of ammunition, and more. So of course, many on the right want to talk about it. Massive amounts of people moving from one area to another, no matter what race, will cause some sort of effect on the economies. As stated, many refugees are going unchecked. Nobody knows exactly how many there are, or many of their criminal backgrounds. So of course the right is highly concerned with this. And just like Red in this scene, they are not specifically saying that they are bad, or that they should all be sent away. Red just points out and says that something is up. This is kind of mysterious. We should take a moment to find out what's going on. And the result is him being booed. Just like how many people on the right with similar concerns are being labeled as racist and shunned. Also in this scene we have this bit, where a pig randomly leaps at this bird with no warning and starts talking in a seductive tone. All this takes place during a celebration, so this may be a reference to the New Year's Cologne incident in Germany, where gangs of men suspected of being migrants went on a sexual assault spree. Those on both sides of the political spectrum were concerned with this, but primarily the right labeled the attackers as Islamic migrants and were called racist for doing so. Leonard then goes on to make his case about the large numbers of pigs, stating that they are simple folk, which is often the stereotype of Muslims primarily from the right, being simple-minded and simple-cultured. He goes on to play the victim, stating that now he feels like an outcast and everybody gets mad at Red for making him feel this way. The Judge Bird even states that he sent Red to treatment for his problems, and now he needs more. Possibly a reference to how those on the far right believe that there is a conspiracy by the government to treat those on the right into becoming more leftist, as to better take advantage of them. We then get a musical montage of the next week or so while the pigs put on a cowboy show, 
that being a male stripper cowboy show. Perhaps as a nod to another far-right conspiracy theory, that being that the migrants are coming to have children with European women as to take out the white race. And step one, of course, is seducing them. We then get a large number of clips of the pigs becoming a part of the culture. At one point, there is even photo evidence of the pigs being suspicious, but no one bats an eye. The pigs start taking all of the food that the birds were giving away, possibly a reference to all of the free food and money being given to the refugees. We then have more scenes of them being suspicious, and then of them taking over Red's property, possibly a reference to how many farmers and landowners in Europe had their property temporarily seized to make room for the refugees, and when they leave, they left it a mess. After the musical number, we get to another scene where eventually Red starts asking Leonard some more questions about them. Again, not specifically calling them bad pigs, but pointing out that he is just suspicious and wants to know what's going on. Because though they claimed to be explorers, more and more pigs are coming. The judge that previously was talking about how great freedom and liberty are, then comes up and tells Red that his opinion is not needed, and are making their guests uncomfortable. It was a long reference for sure, but perhaps these two scenes together make up another point that those on the right frequently bring up. Those on the far left love using their freedom and liberty, but only when it suits them, and not the others whom they disagree with. Your opinion is not needed! Why do we have to agree? Why does it matter that we're not the same? Red responds just by saying, And you're not asking basic questions. Uh -huh. Bringing up that concern primarily from the right again. Red then turns and looks up to the statue of Mighty Eagle and says, We could really use your help right about now. This is when the symbolism of the eagle begins to shift from symbolizing freedom and liberty to the United States specifically. More on that soon. Another ship of pigs arrive, and by the way, the ships being the mode of transport also fits with how many of the refugees are arriving by boat over the Mediterranean. Also, another interesting tidbit is that not one of the pigs in the entire movie are female, which brings up another concern mainly brought up by the right, that these immigrants are mostly young men, and it will throw our almost perfect balance of the sexes out of whack. Statistical analysis of the refugees shows that 72% of them are male and are mostly younger. Red mentions that something about these pigs is non-kosher. Kosher, of course, refers to food that is prepared in a way that is acceptable to Jewish law. However, the Muslim faith also contains many rules that are very similar. Primarily, and most famously, however, it forbids them from eating pork which from their perspective makes their representation as pigs all the more insulting. Red then convinces Chuck and Bomb to come with him to find Mighty Eagle, because if anyone knows what's up, it's him. We then get a short 2D animation about how great and strong and egotistical Mighty Eagle is. Obviously now, it represents the United States of America. The birds then climb the mountains and find the Lake of Wisdom that is said to be Mighty Eagle's nesting place. They begin swimming in the Lake of Wisdom until Mighty Eagle comes out from his cave and begins peeing in it. As it turns out, Mighty Eagle is now very fat, very lazy, old, and even says he is retired. But he is still very full of himself, and especially of his past achievements. At one point, even showing off his trophy collection, or as he puts it, his large and countless collection of trophies. You can count them if you want, there are 13. And now, Mighty Eagle's persona has been fleshed out. First, a tiny history lesson. During the Great Enlightenment, a time where a lot of wise people used their wisdom, a bunch of guys came up with the idea that maybe a king isn't best. Maybe we should be ruled by the people, for the people, and put freedom and liberty above all else. These people would later found the United States of America, combining 13 states, 13 trophies. Eventually, most of the rest of the Western world did the same, which is why even in the village, which may represent Europe, they still used Mighty Eagle as an example and loved freedom and liberty. The United States was just the first major nation to put it so highly. Now from the right's perspective, they see America's past as righteous, and while it may have had a few mistakes, overall America was once the greatest nation in the world. However, they see America of today as a has-been, a shadow of its former self. And while it was once wise and great, it now pisses all over that wisdom and progress with its left-leaning politics. Also, a good number of those outside of the US see the US as a fat and lazy nation, also very full of itself. This all fits Mighty Eagle perfectly. 
Also, I should point out that when traveling together, these three birds make up the colors of the German flag, in the right order even. And there's also the whole angry German stereotype, which is fitting. Back at the village, we see the pigs hiding TNT all over the place, and leaving their cars and motorcycles all over the place as well, which is a danger to children, possibly a reference to the stereotype of Muslims with explosives, and the rise of child molestation in Europe, which the right claims is due to an influx of Islamic migrants. You you look delicious, my dear. We also see the pigs breaking all sorts of traffic laws right here, and nothing is being done about it. They are skirting the law that earlier in the movie played a big part in holding back red. This may be a reference to the massive amounts of cover-ups going on in Europe where law enforcement is letting a large amount of law-breaking refugees to get off free, and covering up them doing so. As the right puts it, they are getting away with causing havoc, and the police aren't doing anything about it because they are afraid of being labeled as racist and losing their jobs. Back at Mighty Eagle, it turns out this whole time he has been spying on the village, and so he knows about everything that's going on, including watching this old woman bathe. Oh, you're disgusting. This is an obvious reference to the NSA and such, America's program that spies all over everyone's internet data. A major concern people have is the government getting all of your nude photos. And this is an obvious jab at that. However, Mighty Eagle, and thus America, is also seeing everything that the pigs are up to. However, despite this, he tells the birds that he won't fix it. He is retired. But fear not, because this is everything that he prepared them for. And I feel like this next scene speaks for itself fairly well, so I'll just dub over it. The whole world, everyone we know, is in danger. Yes, it is. So off you go. Hey, you know what? I used to believe in you. When I was a kid, I believed nothing bad could ever happen because you were here. And now I see that the fate of the world rests in the hands of idiots like me. And that's... That's sort of terrifying. It's time for you to go. You know, it's really upsetting to me that you're the only bird that can fly. And you're too afraid to do it. That last sentence may be a reference to America's military power and how it used to be highly involved in the Middle East, but has since left. From the right's perspective, it is now too afraid to step up and get back into fighting all of the terror in the Middle East. On the way back, they see the pigs taking the eggs while all of the other birds are distracted with a big party hosted by the pigs and the whole village starts blowing up while the pigs steal the eggs and laugh maniacally, an obvious reference to Islamic extremist terrorist attacks, both real ones such as the Paris attacks and ones that the right predicts will happen soon. The pigs then get away with all of the eggs and the village then realizes that Red was right the whole time. He convinces them that they have to strike back, or go to war, to get their eggs, their children, back. They build a boat and head over. He tells them to drop your nuts and move your butts! A reference to dropping your balls, a saying that means to man up and grow up. The birds soon see the castle, and in it it gets revealed that Leonard is actually King Mudbeard. A long battle ensues wherein the birds slingshot themselves into the city, and from this point onward there are only a few subtle bits of evidence here and there, until way later on. First is Hamnesy International, a play on words of Hannesy International, a drilling company, often drilling for oil, a resource that many Middle Eastern economies are based on. We also see a pig eating a hot dog. Most commonly, hot dogs are made out of a combination of beef and pork. As such, these pigs must be harming themselves, a possible reference to the fact that most victims of Islamic extremist terrorist attacks are others in the Islamic faith. Back to Mighty Eagle, he turns on Rick Astley's Never Gonna Give You Up, Never Gonna Let You Down, Never Gonna Run Around and Desert You, the lyrics here being symbolic. He finally flies out to help the birds, similar to how in both of the world wars, America comes in to help Europe a bit later on into the conflict. From the right's perspective, the migrant crisis may be a similar situation, as right now it is mostly impacting Europe, but soon will begin impacting the US at a much higher level, raising the US's concern, and eventually getting them involved. Back at the battle on the ground, the birds steal a pig's car, and on it we get a nice close look at a coexist bumper sticker, which is a bumper sticker that spreads the message that people of all religious beliefs can coexist together in harmony, something that many of those on the right see as ignorant of the truth, and an impossibility, exclusively due to the Islamic faith clashing with everything the Western world stands for. 
but of course the scheming pigs would be supportive of this idea. Bomb is trying to explode, but his anxiety isn't letting him. He needs to be shocked or surprised or made very upset to do so. He lists many things in his head, but the thing that finally gets him to explode is Think explosive thoughts! Uh, surprise parties! Yoga poses! Pigs in airplanes! A reference to the fear of Muslims on airplanes ever since 9-11. And speaking of 9-11 references, the first thing the pigs did was run their ship into Red's house. While Red may directly reference Germany, he also symbolizes the right-wing viewpoint. In this instance, he may have symbolized the US as well, or at least his house did, as the US is considerably more right-winged overall than most of Europe. Also, to many people of the Western world in the 90s and before, Muslims were just another group of foreign people, completely normal up until 9-11, when suddenly they were put into the spotlight, and unfortunately, not a very highly regarded one. Anyway, after the battle and the eggs are all back, Mighty Eagle starts talking to the other birds, calling them his prized pupils who learned their lesson well. He then says that he had to make Europe, I mean the birds, lose faith in him so that they could learn to have faith in themselves. A statue is then erected in honor of this battle, and of course, as Chuck points out, they gave Mighty Eagle all the credit. There's only a small nod to Red. Another reference to how, at least within American education, they are often taught that the US was the biggest and most helpful player in the World Wars. Despite that, while still being a big part of it, it was certainly not deserving of all of the credit. During the beginning of the ending sequence, I Will Survive by Gloria Gaynor is playing, which has lyrics including, Go on now, go, walk out the door, and I will not crumble, I will not lay down and die. I will survive, and you are not welcome anymore. And one more thing. There is this thing called red pilling, a reference to the Matrix wherein if you take the blue pill, you continue to live your everyday life in ignorance. Or if you take the red pill, you will awaken and be brought into reality. Essentially, being red pilled means you were kicked back into reality. Many on the right are referring to Angry Birds as the ultimate red pill movie. And who is the star of the movie? Red. And that is the Angry Birds movie. As I stated at the beginning, nothing I just said is representative of my own opinions. I have a separate video here where you can listen to my opinions if you want. This video is just me pointing out one possibility of this movie's meaning and symbolism, and I could be very wrong, as another possibility is that the pigs, being pigs, are Americans, or perhaps colonial Europeans themselves coming to America with their superior technology and taking everything from the natives, for example. So I genuinely hope you've learned something today. If you did, why not leave a like and share this with your friends and family on either side of the political spectrum. I hope you continue to use your noggin and stay awesome. If you like deep analysis of movies, I also have this video about Jar Jar Binks being the true evil mastermind behind Star Wars. Check it out if you'd like, and good night. The movie's plot a movie that I surprisingly do recommend seeing, so only go into this video if you are prepared for every spoiler. Now then, while I'll get into how we know this later, I'd like to start by just flat out saying that Red here represents people on the right side of the political spectrum, and the village he lives in represents Western Europe. Red lives alone, off in the distance from the main village, representing how often major cities tend to be left-leaning and people out in rural areas tend to be to the right. Even in Texas, the state most often mocked for being so conservative has a left-wing majority in its major cities. This is when I'll bring up Red's anger. Of course, living in a world that is increasingly going into the opposite direction of your own views is frustrating, and we'll get more into that soon. But as we see in the very beginning of the movie, Red is angry that he had to deliver a gluten-free cake, stating, To get the gluten-free cake? What the heck is gluten? I mean, does gluten even exist? As we know, the gluten-free fad is typically associated with, quote-unquote, hipsters, along with things like veganism and kale. And hipsters also tend to be left-leaning. So of course, this angers Red. During the opening credits, we see Red getting angry at this blue bird with a light stripe for playing soccer in his yard. So he slaps it. This is actually a reference to the 2014 World Cup, Germany versus Argentina. The German team wears red, and the Argentinian team wears blue and white stripes. 
These colors also fit their flags. And red being Germany here will be brought up throughout the entire movie. Red, or Germany, takes out this blue bird, or Argentina, in a single strike, referencing the World Cup where Germany won the game with a score of 1-0. to zero. We also see that he is not fond of this mime, who is always too close to him. Mimes, as we know, are often a symbol of France, who is a neighbor of Germany. Why else would there be a mime here? There's no mime in the game. This could also be a reference to World War II, in which Germany took over France very quickly. This scene could also be a reference to Germany, as Red here is playing big and tough against these other powerhouses. We also see him slap down a doctor, which as we see in his certificate, has the last name Wingstein. So judging by this, this doctor is of Jewish descent as last names ending with Stein are often German or Jewish. Red knocking him down may be a reference to the Holocaust, as even Red is surprised after doing it and is trying to be a bit secretive, perhaps a reference to Germany's rules about mentioning Nazis or the Holocaust in media at all. He feels bad about it and knows it was a mistake. And still, in the opening credits, we see Red as a child creating a magnificent statue of an eagle, which as we know, and later gets referenced a ton in this movie, represents America. But in this case, Red is making this specifically to symbolize his love of freedom and liberty. But his fellow classmates mock him for this. As many people see, many people on the left make fun of and mock people on the right. Which is not to say people on the right don't either. Rather, it's saying that it is more socially acceptable for people on the left to do so, because, according to them and the mass media, they are on the right side of history, in their eyes. It is also worth noting that while Red is making this great and detailed statue, his fellow classmates are making finger paintings of rainbows. Take that as you will. And we're not out of the opening credits yet. Here we see some girls supposedly flirting with Red, but as the joke goes, they were actually looking at someone behind, or rather above, Red, the much more attractive bird. At first, this seems to be the usual joke, but as they walk away, we can see that the bird that was flirting is now holding hands, and the other two female birds are now holding hands as well. They are lesbians. And now may be the best time to point this out. Notice Red's hair, or plumage. It's typical bird hair. It's somewhat neat, a reference to how typically conservatives, especially those in the Christian faith, often keep their hair short and neat. A majority of the other birds, and especially the ones who are already doing other things to symbolize their left-leaning side, have much wilder plumage. This lesbian bird having dyed hers bright pink. After the credits, we see Red in a courtroom, because while angry, he accidentally landed on another bird's eggs. And as it turns out, this family that wanted the gluten-free cake are also practitioners of natural child hatching, and speak in a much holier-than-thou tone all about it. Right now, these gluten-free, natural childbirth hippies are the only antagonists so far. But while the camera heads into the courtroom, we see this bird with a neck brace walking out, but then takes it off and smiles, high-fiving his buddy. They obviously just got away with suing somebody over a fake injury, showing that there are many birds who take advantage of the system. In The Angry Birds movie has a lot of political symbolism both hidden and blatantly put out there within it. Much like Zootopia, but this time it's the opposite political agenda. Before we get into this, there are two things I want to say. Number one is nothing in this video is or is not my own opinions or political views. This video is me pointing out the symbolism and what it may mean. In other words, if something in this video offends you and you wish to go down into the comment section and spread hate speech, just remember that as I said here, this video is not about my opinion, it is entirely about the facts and the speculation. Don't shoot the messenger. The second is that you should realize that the first bits of evidence will always sound odd and even silly. There's always a counter-argument. But as the list goes on and pieces start coming together, realize that everything needs to be taken into account in the grand scheme of things. One tiny political reference is meaningless, but in the grand scheme of the entire meaning of the entire movie, if it fits right in with what the rest of them are saying, you can bet your tail feathers that there's some hidden meaning. Also, major, major spoiler warning. This video goes in depth on most of 